Welcome to week 12 of Critical Mass Extreme right here on DoD TV. This week we're bringing you the story of a 203 inch major league Iowa giant. And you can only see it right here on CMX. Let's roll that beautiful big buck footage. If you've kept up with Mossy Oak's critical mass this season, you know Greg Glessinger has been dominating the competition with his two epic hunts. But as we await next week's episode to finally crown the winner of critical mass, we decided to dive deeper into the story behind Greg's 203 inch Iowa Giant. Let's take a look at Greg's four year quest to take down Major League. The story of Major League started way back in 2013. When the Reconyx trail cameras were coming in in the fall of 13, we came across the deer with three main beams. Derek and I were going through pick by pick and he said, holy smokes dad, that guy's a monster. That is a Major League deer. Thus the name, Major League. So going into the fall of 2013, we knew there was one deer we were chasing. Of course, it was Major League. We were lucky enough to have one encounter early November just off the pretty woods on one of the biologic food plots. Once we saw him on the hoof, we thought it was three, no more than four. But the fact that he looked so young, we erred on caution, said, you know what? Even if he was four, what could he be if we let him go? Upon deciding to let him walk, we never had another encounter all the way through the fall of 13. Now fast forwarding to 2014, trail cameras were coming in, we were looking for one deer. Of course, it was Major League. Sure enough, we found him within the same section of the farm. We believe, after further review, he is now four years old. Come early November, we know one spot we're going, the same spot we saw him the year before.
Unfortunately, he slipped through our fingers and we didn't get an opportunity. So we go back in the following day. He didn't show up, but guess who does? Frosty himself. Now this guy is six and a half, if not seven and a half years old. The fact that Frosty was six and a half or seven and a half, we decided to say, you know what? We're gonna see if we can arrow him and give Major League another year to grow. I think Frosty is down. Now come 2015, he's starting to have his own little legacy. Unfortunately, all we got was Reconyx trail pictures. Never had an encounter with him once. Not that we didn't try, because we were bouncing all around the farm trying to find him with no luck. So 2015 comes and goes with not even an encounter or not even seeing him at all. The mystery of Major League now moves on to 2016. Ever wonder what goes on inside the brain of a whitetail buck that gets him up and on the move? Well, we've cracked that code and are delivering it to you in the DeerCast app, a revolution in deer movement forecasting. Available now for iOS and Android. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast. In 2016, we planned a family trip for a little shed hunting down to Iowa. Of course, you know who we were chasing. We had one deer in mind that we had to find. We dove into the pretty woods and sure enough, now we define one shed, we found his match set. Note to self, right? This is one piece of the puzzle, now it's all coming together. Trail pictures start coming in fall of 2016. Now we had him dialed in within 60 to 80 acres. We had him figured out. His core area was now shrinking and now he's six and a half years old. The fall of 16 was not the best for us. We needed predominantly north winds to hunt major league. And that fall was predominantly more south than north. So unfortunately, we never had too many really good opportunities to even hunt him. So fall of 16 comes and goes with no encounters, no sightings, nothing. Spring of 2017 couldn't come soon enough. The family's all excited about doing another annual shed hunt back to Iowa. We're going straight to the pretty woods looking for major league. And believe it or not, within the first hour, we found his match set within 60 to 70 yards of the set we found in the spring of 2016. So now we know this is his core area. Come July, we go in, we hang a set just south of where we found the match set of that same spring in 17. We've got food plots to the north, we got food plots to the east, and we got food plots to the west. And the pretty road sits right in the middle, and we need access to the south. For the first north wind, you can imagine where we're gonna go. The evening, November the 5th, we're checking the deer cast, and sure enough, it's a high pressure and it's the first dominant north wind that we've got. Guess where we're gonna go? The muddy tree stand that we had hung back in July, right smack dab in the pretty woods. We get in there at least 45 minutes to an hour before daybreak, and we know we're going in there for an all-day set. Well, it's the morning of November the 6th. We've got a north northwest wind, about 8 to 10. And we're sitting in a place that we've never been to. This is the first time I've ever sat in this location. It's called the Pretty Woods. Obviously, you can see it's got its day modestly. It is a huge hardwood timber ridge that runs north to south. And the reason why we're here is the past two years we've sung multiple sheds and we finally figured out that they're running from east to west between different food sources that we have on each side of this ridge so we're going to push our luck a little bit and see if uh, our game pays off. Okay, 
got him. Got him. There, he's right there. Got him. I got him. All right. Major League comes and goes, and I took no shot, never drew. The frustration, the disappointment that came over me was something that I could never describe. November of 6th comes and goes, and Major League moved to the south. Regrouped that evening and checked the deer cast again. Sure enough, we got a north wind, high pressure day. We're going back to the same tree stand. We know we're pushing our luck in a seven and a half year old deer. Who knows how much time we've got to kill him because every day that goes by, we're pushing the rut and him getting locked down. So we know we're running out of time. Big buck, big buck. You shoot him. He came from the south, threw us for a complete curveball, had no idea that was the direction he would be coming from. This time he was a little bit farther down the ridge. I look at Casey and I said, come noon when everything dies down, we got to move our set southwest. And I was ranging trees and trying to figure out where we're going to go. Come noon, pulled the muddy tree stands down, moved them 32 yards to the southwest, sat the rest of the day on November the 7th. No encounters for the rest of the day. The doubts start to set in. You start replaying every single thing that we've done and how could we do it differently? But you realize there's nothing you can do now. Now we've got to go back in on the ninth. Check deer cast. We're lucky enough again to get another north wind with another high pressure. Sure enough, come about 7 o'clock, 7.10, he comes due west of us. This time, he's dogging a doe.
Agueros in Major League. I missed him on the first one because he was at 36, 38 yards. And I was scared that he was going to chump my arrow. So I put it on the bottom, right at, right at his belly, thinking he was going to jump and go down into the arrow. And I guessed wrong. Lucky enough, the doe kept him here. I put another arrow in him. That one was low. Could have been a little bit higher. Then he went out at 47 yards. And the only thing I could see was a V of a tree, and it was the only shot I had. That is the biggest deer of my life. Biggest deer of my life. I'm, I, I gotta hang out on a tree, man. I'm just freaking shaking so bad that I don't wanna, I don't wanna fall out. In case we work so hard, man. Well, we just got down and we're about 450 yards due east of the deer where we saw him go last. We got a long hike to get out of here and actually Mark's gonna pick us up. I wanna put him in the truck. I wanna put him in the ram first. <laughs> and then we'll get excited. Yeah, it ain't ever over till you grab that antler. No, it's not. Well, but... jump in guys, we'll get you warmed up. Was it hard quarter or slightly quarter? Is he hard quarter or slightly quarter? No, when he when he spun, I'd say slightly, not hard. But what do you think, Casey? He takes one step there. It, it's in between. Yeah. He's in about between. a dead quarter, isn't he? Yes. yes. It's about a dead quarter. Not hard quarter, not slightly. Yeah, about a dead quarter away. So that. Did it catch the ham or it went in just in front of the in ham? Front, in front just of. in front of the ham and then buries up to the fletch from what I saw. Into the knock. Yeah. Into the knock. It, it, the whole shaft is up in him. So that's okay, up. Okay, so when, when he ran off, did, was it the exit or was it into the off shoulder? We don't know that. We don't know that. Inconclusive. To me, it looks like there is no exit. To me, it looks like it's, it's like all the way up in him. Well, it's the morning of November the 10th. We shot him yesterday morning at uh, 745. We believe he's dead. Um, just the question is, can we go find him? That's the reason why we backed out. So the quest for Major League starts now. Hopefully it's the last, last uh, chapter in his book. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> Holy cats, Casey. Oh my god. The longest 24 hours of my hunting career has been the last 24 hours. My Lord, is he big. Well, it's the morning of November the 10th. We shot him 24 hours ago on the 9th. We've hunted Major League now nine straight days this year. He's seven and a half years old. We've got two complete match sets of his sheds, both of which were found within 100 yards of each other in a place we call Pretty Woods. Reconics Trail Pictures had him dialed in within a 60 acre radius. Now we knew going into 2017, we're going all in, but we're gonna swing and miss on this guy. And sure enough, at 7.45 in the morning of the night, we actually hit the Grand Slam, and he is much, much larger than I would have ever anticipated or ever imagined. It's not always about the destination, it's about the journey. And he really gave us one that I will never, ever forget. Talk about a buck of a lifetime, and quite the story to go with it. Congratulations, Greg, on a true mega giant. That does it for this week's episode of CMS. Make sure to tune in to the season finale of Mossy Oak's Critical Mass next Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Central, only on the Outdoor Channel. We're going to crown our winner, let you decide a fan favorite clubhouse member, and we've also got a few surprises up our sleeves. 
Thanks for watching TMX, and we'll see you next week. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by MOTV.